Hey, what's going on guys? Comeback again here. In this video, we're gonna implement one very important helper function that would be allowing us to count bits within the bitboard. But before, but before we actually start implementing this function, first, I'd like to demonstrate you a particular bit hack this function is based on. So if you just go uh, to the very bottom of our source file, get rid of uh, printing the uh, attacks for our rook, and let's just try to print, well, let's first actually try to open the terminal in the current working directory, compile and run the code. So I need to say make debug, and if it makes, if it compiles around the BBC binary executable. So here we have a bit board uh, of blockers. It doesn't matter what this bit board represent now in particular. The only thing we need here, the only thing we're interested in is actually the bit. So we need to uh, create a function, function that would return one, two, three, four, five that would return the number of five uh, counting the bits within this sort of a bit board. and all the now the bit hack I've, I've been talking about so if we just say print bit board and uh, say so the big hack uh, the idea bit, bit behind this bit hack is actually to reset the least significant first bit and in order to do this we can simply say like uh, block bitwise or equals bit board minus one so if I have a look, uh, I'm sorry, not the bit board, but, but, but block, uh, like this. So you see like we had this least signif significant first bit and then we just get this, uh, we, uh, uh, this bit has disappeared. We just uh, kind of uh, did reset this bit. And if we just try to make this a couple more times, we'll see that the bits, the least significant first bit is disappearing. Uh, those bits are, are disappearing one by one. So this is the core concept, the core bit hack uh, behind the particular bit, uh, bit count implementation uh, that we're supposed to be implementing in this video at least. So bearing this idea in mind, uh, I would now want to go to the part where our bit manipulations uh, are available and here uh, we'll create a function to count bits within a bit board. So uh, this would be the integer and as far as we're supposed to be using this uh, function quite pretty heavily uh, within the mode generator uh, as well not only uh, for the purposes of initializing the uh, slider attack, uh, slider attacks uh, for uh, uh, not only for initializing attacks for slider, slider pieces, assuming the magic bitboard implementation, but also in the uh, mode generator, generator as well. So we can call this function static inline int integer. So this uh, this would be just working faster. And I call this count uh, count bits, right? And it would be taking the u64 unsigned long long bit board type as an argument here. And first we need to initialize the bit count. So bit, uh, bit counter and integer count equals to zero like this. And eventually we want to return bit count and return count like this. Okay, and now the idea is very simple. We need to consecutively. I've I've just <laughs> learned this word yesterday, <laughs> guys. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this not really that great yet. So we need to consecutively reset list significant uh, first bit in our bit board. So we can simply say like while uh, bit board. Uh, Bitboard is oh my god what am I doing? Bitboard is greater than zero or simply while well, bitboard assuming that uh, this bitboard returns true so it's greater than zero obviously so assuming this stuff we we need to increment our count by saying count plus plus and also reset this least significant first bit. And here is the place for here is the right, the right place for the bit hack that I've just introduced to you guys. So we can simply say bitboard bitwise end equals to bitboard minus one, and this should already give us uh, 
a number of bits within a current given bit board. So let's try to say print f and just let's call it big count and this would be the decimal specifier. So count bits and the bitboard name itself I would be uh, passing this block bitboard that that we've seen right over in here uh, right over in here and in theory it should return the number of five because we have one up to one two three four five bits right over in here so let's have a look okay just uh, a little typo here okay so we got this bit bit count equals to five we just we've just calculated uh, we've just counted all the bits available on the current given bit board and the next video we're going to be implementing the function uh, serving the purpose of getting the index of the least significant uh, first bit and that function would also be relying on this bit count function that we've just created obviously it's not the the fastest uh, way of doing things obviously but uh, it's quite pretty clear way and uh, as, as, as I will as I've already been mentioning in the very first video within this series in the intro part that uh, I'm actually sacrificing uh, performance at some point uh, to make code as clear as, pos as possible just for the d didactic purposes so obviously uh, you can uh, use some different implementations of uh, count bit function and also of uh, uh, the function getting the index of the least significant first bit so uh, uh, probably you've seen like uh, if you if you try to play around with engines uh, within the arena gui you probably saw like there, there was kind of some engines have so-called bmi version of it so uh, uh, they're making use of the uh, hardware uh, bit manipulation instructions bmi stands for bit manipulation instructions so uh, if uh, you have an appropriate architecture and the target machine you run in your chess engine it might be it might be working uh, much faster uh, if you're using the hardware uh, implementations of uh, doing all these various bit manipulations but uh, I just want to show you the concept and uh, functions like uh, count bits and get the index of the uh, less least significant first bit might be implemented uh, really uh, uh, in various ways and you can always just uh, change these functions later on within your engine to increase the performance and also you can play around with different algorithms to see which one would be working better for you assuming your particular processor architecture uh, within the within the target machine you run your code so this is it from my side regarding this topic at least guys so thanks for watching thanks for following this tutorial i really appreciate your feedbacks and uh, the matter that you subscribe to this chess programming channel more and more uh this motivates me keep uh, keep going with this series and trying to improve the content and the presentation and all this stuff so uh i hope to see you in the next video until the next time and take care